hello, I'm really sorry about the state of his. I didn't really feel putting makeup on for this video was appropriate. I always knew I was going to film this video, it was just a case of when. When the timing felt right and I woke up today and today was the right timing. Because there's someone in Big Brother being blatantly bullied. This is someone who's a recovering addict, a recovering alcoholic, a recovering substance abuser. She's got anxiety, she's got depression, she's a very vulnerable person. She's a very lovely person. And there's people in there blatantly bullying her and that's been allowed to happen. I can't really sit back and watch this happen anymore because that makes me an enabler. And I've always been taught if you see someone being bullied, you help them. It makes me sick to my stomach what goes on in this fucking industry sometimes and I feel very passionately about it. So Trish has left um, Celebrity Big Brother and I know for a fine fact that I'm counting her she's going to make a very decent video. But yeah I've always wanted to make this and I kind of didn't want people to be like oh she's jumping on the bandwagon of the back of Trish's. Um, I want to make mine hopefully I'll get it out before she uploads hers so I can kind of compare and see what we've both said because I'm very interested to hear what her experience is going to be. But plain and simple, I'm scared that the reality television scene is one day going to push someone too far. There's someone being blatantly bullied and picked apart on the telly. I can't, I can't get over it. I can't get over it. So it's finally time for me to talk about my experience with this corrupt industry because it's corrupt i won't be made to feel like what happened to me was my fault anymore because for a long while i feel like i was kind of conditioned and i felt like i fucked everything up for myself and i fucked my life up but i didn't i was pushed so hard to the point of near insanity and no one give a fuck because I was a number, I was a statistic. I'm affected every day still heavily by what I went through and it was traumatic and it was a very unhealthy environment for a person like me who at the time when I went in was vulnerable myself and I see a lot of the way Sarah's acting, that is how I felt. So let's start at the very start, the casting process for these shows. Do you think that the casters, researchers, do you think that they look for, you know, stable, well-balanced people? Of course they don't. They look for people who, who are unstable, who are psychotic, who have anger issues, who are upset, who've had troubled upbringings. This is the harsh reality. That is what they look for because these are the perfect sort of people to pluck away and manipulate. They are. Don't forget when I was cast on a dating show, my literal tagline was Psycho Sarah. That was written all over the promo. People still call me that to this day. It was encouraged. And I myself fed into it because I was young and I was stupid and it got romanticised. And then when Meg McKenna came in and she was like the ultimate psycho, it became glorified and it almost became a trend. Um, I noticed a lot of girls thought it was cool to be angry and insecure, just like how I was. And it's very, very uncool. Now it's not right that that's looked for. Essentially, let's be honest, they're taking broken people and they're thrusting them into a very, very negative environment where drama is encouraged. In a normal place of work, some of the things that went on would be downright illegal. Four hours sleep, still drunk, still mortal. But we've got a schedule, you know, get up, come on, very tight schedule, everyone up, out. You got that piss the night before to endure it. That's why you were that pissed. You're still sometimes that pissed when you wake up. Everyone does a psych test to go on these shows. Clearly, you know, legal reasons. So it's not, they're not liable. If you fucking haul yourself off the balcony, you did a psych test, you said you were fine. Everyone lies through their teeth on these psych tests clearly 
because that's how you get on. But let's be upfront here. Yeah? I'm a person with a severe anxiety disorder, which is only heightened since but I'll get onto that more um with that lovely side order of depression because they go so nicely together you can see it yourself just watch I cry constantly but not for the reasons that I should I'm, un I'm unstable I'm downright depressed I should never have been in that environment in the first place but I've got no money people say to me go out and get a real job if you're that bothered well, I can't get a real job, can I? Because I dropped out of school, I didn't finish school, I don't have the qualifications to do the things that I would have wanted to do. So I then went into the beauty industry um, where there was little to no room for progression. I was on the same wage for six years. So I took television work. I saw that as my opportunity to finally make some money. Which brings me to my next point, being that I'm still broke, I'm in debt up to my eyeballs because I was deceived. I was told, Sarah, you're the new castmate, um, we're gonna put you in, no competition, no concept, it's fine, you can leave your job, uh, we'll, we'll bang you in. So I left my job because this was finally how I was gonna make money. I would finally be able to move out of my mum's house, I would finally be able to get rid of the fucking 15 year old battered Toyota Yaris that I have. It felt seedy and it didn't feel very true to myself at all but I felt like it was my last chance of being able to get some money because of the stupid choices I've made in the past. This was the situation I found myself in. So I get there and obviously there's this whole concept where you have to like fight for your place and it was a competition and I was like, oh my God, what the hell? I've left my job for this. I'm about to leave my dignity behind for this. Um, but I was essentially trapped because I had already left these things behind because I'd been lied to to get there. I would never ever have done that show if that was the concept because if I'm being upfront, it's beggy, it's cringy, and I, I didn't like it from the get go, but I was trapped because what was I gonna return to? But I had to see it out till the end now because I'd found myself in that situation. I thought, fuck, like, if this doesn't work out, I'm I'm royally screwed. I've I fucked it, like. But can you imagine my anxiety at this stage? I felt like a hamster being tested on at a lab. Look at this picture of me. Someone tagged me in this on Instagram and I can't even describe to you how I felt when I looked at it. Like literally, if you look at my eyes, there's nothing behind them. They look dead. I actually look broken. And I remember filming this bit. I was so exhausted and so emotional. I just wanted to sleep. But the guy who does all the online media stuff, it was the end of his shift, he needed to go home. So I said, okay, come on then, let's do it. So I did it and I found a PD after. And I just broke down and I just sobbed into her shoulder. And she was one of the ones that I had heart and I knew that she knew what was happening. It wasn't right. I also look like this because I wasn't given my medication for three days because of the schedule. I brought it up constantly and constantly. I said, guys, look, I need my medication. Can I please have it? Just, Sarah, I've got a schedule. We need go, we need go. We'll get it for you. We'll sort it for you. Come on. And, uh I'm badly anemic um, and if you've got this you'll know exactly what it's like especially if you're if you're a girl um because it's an iron deficiency so it basically means that you're shaky you're short of breath you've got pain in the calves of your legs no balance totally dizzy like really dark circles under your eyes and um just all around severe exhaustion but like I say, I didn't get my medication for three days. Obviously on the agenda was skiing, hungover, on four hours of sleep. And by this point, like I feel like a lot of the people that worked on it just thought I was moany and miserable and a brat. No one listened. It took me to physically stop in my tracks one day in the middle of the snow, crying once again and just say, guys, I need my medication now. 
oh, I'm not going to be able to stand up. I'm definitely not going to be able to ski down a fucking mountain. I had a panic attack that day putting my skis on because I just felt lost. I just felt, I can't even describe to you how much I hated that skiing. At this stage, I was just emotionally drained and I just felt useless. I was on a two month group interview that I was trapped into doing and I detested it. <laughs> One day I was granted leave because I needed the morning after pill and I was with one of my favourite members of the team. So I got the pill and I begged her not to take me back and I could see her looking at me funny because I was like, like I was like scratching my legs and like nipping like like scratching all over myself like a crazy person having an emotional breakdown I was trying to distract myself from the fact that I was about to go back and this was the pinnacle for me I felt something turn in my head and I don't know how to describe it to people but I swear to god it was as though I knew this is it like if I don't do something I'm gonna go insane like this will be the turning point I'll and I'll not come back I will need medical attention I've never felt anything like it before in my life it was like I considered asking if I could go to hospital because I just felt so unhealthy and I just I, I didn't feel sane not one bit but I powered on till the end all the way, all the while being told that I wasn't making the most of my experience. Being told that if I didn't perk up, I was gonna ruin my chances. Now, don't forget, my best friend was in there and we were torn apart by this experience. Still, to be honest, it's never been the same. We don't really talk that much. Um, so there's that support system gone because of Scott. But let's talk about Scott for a second. And this baffles me to this day still, how the people at the top who knew how unstable I was could do this to me. They basically put me to the slaughter when they did this. They knew I would then be the subject of a tirade of online abuse of people calling me a psycho and people saying, oh my God, why is she going on like that for? They knew that and they still chose to edit it in this way. They made out that I had just met Scott when I went into the show. They repeatedly used a line where I say, I kissed him first. They used that consistently throughout to reaffirm the fact that I didn't know Scott before I went in Geordie Shaw. I knew Scott, I've known Scott for years, they know that. Me and Scott started sleeping with each other two years ago, we've got a history together. But they allowed that to happen because obviously they knew in their head that Abby would be the one to stay. So obviously the edit was going to favour Abby throughout. And that's another thing, I was ill and I was anxious about in there because I knew I wasn't stupid. I knew it was going to be Abby that was going to stay and I knew that they would cut out all the bits where Abby was shady and use all the bits where I was. Now one day I sat arguing with a PD for 10 minutes because there was a line that was written for me by someone I've never met. Um, something stupid like saying that Martin had a donkey dick or something. Something that would never ever come out of my mouth in the real world. I literally sat there and it was like I'd had enough by this point. I said I'm not saying that. Absolutely not. No way. And they wouldn't let me leave. She said well you can't leave until you've said it. I need this line for the edit. And I could see other members of the team literally with their head down like this. They couldn't look at us because they knew it was disgusting. And it was disgusting. And that line got used. And that is one of the lines that I'm known for. That never ever came out of my mouth. And that I protested not to say. Let's fast forward to the now. And my working situation. What am I meant to do for work? Let's be honest. I can kiss goodbye to TV. Because for one. It broke my soul. And for two. I was portrayed as a boring. Nasty. Crier. This that and the other. I can't go back to my old job. Because my anxiety is so peak now. It was bad before, but obviously this has literally made it 10 times worse, as you can imagine. I'm having about one panic attack daily now. <sighs> Christ. It's a small town, Newcastle. People will look at me and they'll be like, oh my God, wasn't she on Geordie Shore? Like, why is she back in the salon? How embarrassing. The other thing I do, um, I used to dance on podiums in nightclubs. I've seen people video me because they're like, oh my God, that's that girl off Geordie Shore. How am I supposed to return to either of those things? But then on the other hand, how am I supposed to go back to school and get a respectable job after this? I can't. I went for an interview with a makeup company. 
They knew exactly who I was. They had zero intention of giving me that job. They wanted to meet me and they wanted to laugh at me. And they ridiculed my portfolio of work. I haven't been to an interview since that. So yeah, for a long time I was made to feel like what happened was my fault and I'd overreacted to everything. I wasn't good enough, I was miserable. I wasn't strong enough and I fucked my own opportunity up. That's how I felt for a long time, but I didn't. I was a, I was clearly a vulnerable and messed up person and I was placed in an environment that was always gonna be unhealthy for us. I was exploited and I was treated like a number and now I'm trying to rebuild my life and I'm trying desperately to come out of it a better person. The simple truth of it is, it was traumatic and who has to deal with the aftermath of it? Not the people at the top, me, us, people like Sarah Harden. And it would be so wrong of me to sit back and pretend that it's all okay because there's not a doubt in my mind that one day this will push someone too far past the point of no return like it nearly did for me. And people will continue to be silenced by this because obviously for some people this is it, this is their life now. They want to get on other shows so they'll play the game and they're strong enough to do that and they want to do that and that's amazing and I am really happy for those people. But there's a large number of people that have had a similar experience to me and they are not getting the attention they deserve. But I am here for those people and I am not going anywhere. To be honest, I don't know if anyone will see my little voice as a threat but I'm trying to support a movement because I know that this year the public are getting more and more vigilant to what goes on behind the scenes on these sorts of shows and how it does exploit people, vulnerable people, it further fucks with their head. And I honestly don't know how we can move forward and tackle this problem, but I am gonna have a good think about it. But thank you everyone for listening. I'm so glad I've got that all off my chest, fucking hell. I feel like I've been in therapy and I know it'll be really hard for people to understand because I don't think anyone will understand fully until they've been through a similar experience. But I'll just advise people to be a bit more vigilant and be a bit more empathetic because you don't know the way that these things are edited. You don't know the way that these things are manipulated. There's people specifically hired to fuck with people's heads. That's the truth of it. And the people at the very, very top, they've got to be somewhat they've got to be able to switch their emotions off to what they're doing to a person. But trust, I'm going to come out of this experience a lot stronger and I will not let it break me. And I'm going to try and not let it break anyone else. I think that's all I have to say at the minute. But thank you so much for supporting me.